And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Favor of the Pharaoh. This is from Tom Lemon, and uh, there's a huge box here, a ticket to ride size box. Not, not that big of a deal. The reason I mention that is because the original game came in a much smaller box, To Court the King. To Court the King from Real Grande Games was a game in which you rolled dice and bought tiles, and then you used those tiles to do one final roll off. I was kind of lukewarm on the game, I thought it was okay, but thought you kind of did the same thing every game. Well, they certainly changed that with this one, adding in a pile of different tiles. You'll have a random thing every game of, you know, that's why the box is so big and a lot of extra custom dice in the box too. That doesn't matter though if that makes the game good or not. Let's find out watching this. Now, when you're setting the game up, you can set it up. There's a first person setup in the book, but you can, and there's also an app that you can use to set the game up. Otherwise, you're going to set up different rows here. This is the three dice row. And so you simply roll a die, and if it's evens, you put side B. If it's odds, you put side A. So I, have, I would put side B here, and then I would do the next thing with the next row and so on, uh, putting the rows on either side A or B. Then you'll notice underneath each row here, for example, there's one is a three yellow. So I'd pull out the three yellow stack of tiles. I roll a die three and I go through here and go, oh, okay, here's the threes. So this would be the stack of dice that I would use underneath three of a kind. And you keep doing that to the whole game is set up. So here's a random setup of tiles. Each player gets a start tile and they get a pyramid, which is really only a place to lock your dice. On your turn, a player is going to look at all the tiles they have, at the beginning you only have the start tile, and get dice equal to that. So three red dice, these are normal six-sided dice, and they will roll them. So I rolled a one, a one, and a three. Now, they can lock one, two, or three of these dice. They must lock at least one. What are they trying to get? Well, I'm going to look here at the bottom row, and I'll see here three of a kind, or all dice are greater than or equal to four, all dice are odd, or 15 or higher. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking I'm gonna take a chance here. I'm gonna lock both these ones and try to roll another one. If that fails, then maybe at least I'll roll an odd number and I'll get the all odd. So I roll this, it's a three again. So I lock that one, they're all odd, and now I get this blue tile. Now this blue tile is a tile that I can use on future turns to add one, two, or three to one of my dice. So on my next turn, let's say I do this, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to keep the six, and now I'm gonna re-roll, I'm gonna try to get like some high numbers here. I'm gonna add three to this die, so I would tap this to show that I used it, and now I have another six, and now I roll this, woo, three sixes. So now I can take this three of a kind, and I have this tile here that I'll put in front of me. In the future, this tile is gonna give me an extra red die, that's an automatic one. I can re-roll it, but I get to keep this extra die. Uh, if I had taken this one here, all dice are greater than or equal to four, I would get the orange die, the surf die, which is an extra die, but it's only one through four. Other tiles will give you the yellow die, which has mostly high numbers on it, four, fives, or sixes. There's also one that gives you the blue dice, which lets you, if you roll this special symbol on it, you can change one of your other dice to whatever face you want. Or the cool green die lets you change two other dice to whatever you want. And there's other special dice, each with abilities and things that you can possibly buy. You can also get these white dice, which are actually not as good as the red dice, because when you roll them, you can manipulate them, maybe add pips to them or whatever, but you must immediately lock them. You can't keep re-rolling them. So on a player's turn, they are simply going to keep rolling dice, but each time you re-roll, you must lock at least one die in the pyramid, and when you're done, you can take one of the tiles in the middle. If you take a blue or a red tile, you'll get chips as bonuses, and the, remember the yellow tiles will mostly give you dice that you can use each turn. The blue tiles will let you manipulate dice. For example, this one lets you flip a die over to its other side. This one lets me change a die to whatever side I want. This lets me add two pips to as many dice as I want. 
and the red tiles are things I can use once per game. So like here, take another turn immediately, or here, five chips. What are these chips, you ask? Well, these chips are two different types of chips. You have re-roll chips and you have add pip chips. You can add pips to dice with these chips and you can re-roll for free other dice with these chips. And if you have a lot of these chips, you can manipulate your rolls. And you get these chips when you buy blue and red tiles. And also there are different tiles that will give you specific chips. If you get nothing on your turn, you at least get this herder. You can take him, lock a pair, and then roll a dice. Um, and you can't have more than one of the different tiles. Uh, there's, there's not enough tiles for most people to have them anyway. Like for example, there's only two of these charioteers that, that give you a free five-sided die. Um, but, uh, you, but so you're going to try to get as many different tiles as you can. If you mess up twice and you, get the, you already have the herder, then you simply just get two chips if you roll nothing. So players are going to keep rolling and rolling and re-rolling and doing different things to get dice that they want. Eventually, someone is going to get the queen up here. Here, seven of a kind. The queen is great because she gives you a die, and you can just put it on whatever side you want. It's pretty powerful. Once the queen happens, that person is going to take the pharaoh piece, and we're going to have a final roll-off. So this roll off is to see who wins the favor of the pharaoh, and each person is going to roll all their dice using all their tiles and all their special abilities and trying to get the best roll they can. The person who has the favor of the pharaoh piece here will go last, and you're trying to roll, and once you're done rolling, you'll mark down here what you have, so maybe I got nine sixes, and that's the, what I roll, but you get eight, I mean ten twos. Ten twos is better than nine sixes, but someone else gets ten fours, well, then that person will win. And so players will, again, will use all the different special abilities and everything they have. Whoever gets the highest, best roll of dice wins the favor of the Pharaoh. Now, I like the original game okay enough. I like rolling dice and things, but I like this one much better. And there's many reasons for that, but the biggest one is just diversity. There are so many different tiles and different combinations of what you need to roll. I mean, for example, on this one here, on one side, you need to roll five of a kind. That's on both sides. This one here, you need to roll one, two, three, four, five, or three, or two, three, four, five, six. Here, all the dice have to be two or less. Here, a pair and three of a kind, or here, three sixes and a pair of ones. Here, 25 or higher. Here, all five dice must be different. And I like that. That just gives you different things to go for. Every game has a different feel to it. I also love, love the custom dice. You know, having dice with custom faces is always fun. I like the one die as three, four, fives, and sixes, and the other die is one, two, threes, and fours. I like that, and it's, and it's easy to remember all the white dice are those nasty, annoying dice. You roll them and they have to be locked right away. And then the chips, it's, the chips must flow. There's plenty of chips that come into the game and they're easy to use. You always feel like you can manipulate something. At the very beginning, you're kind of stuck with three dice, but once you get a fourth die, and then you get some chips, and then you get a blue special ability, suddenly you feel a lot of freedom. And there are times in this game where you can get to the final turn and be like, yeah, I'm not gonna win, because I don't, someone else has so many cool special abilities and things, but the game is short enough that I don't think it's a problem, and I think the journey is a lot of fun as you get the different tiles. And as you get the, you know, all these different custom dice and you're chucking dice, the pyramid piece itself is really the tie to the theme of this game. It's to favor the Pharaoh. Yeah, okay, whatever. It's not very Egyptian-like other than just the pictures and things. But I do like the pyramid because you could, yes, just put your dice to one side and remember that they're there, but that's an easy thing for people to forget. It's just nice to have them locked into that pyramid, and it does add whatever flavor this game might have. But theme aside, if you like chucking dice, if you like to roll and see what kind of Yahtzee-style roll, I mean, this is Yahtzee on steroids in a sense, and it's a really fun dice game. I think you'll like it. Um, I think it plays best with maybe three players. It goes up to four, um, but with four, you kind of have to wait for your turn to go around more often than not. With two or three, you can go back and forth really quickly, and it seems like you're chucking dice a lot more in that version, and that's what I would recommend it as. Again, it seems a lot pretty big for what's in the game, but they don't jip you. There's a nice insert inside that holds all the tiles. Every, I mean, there's just a plethora of diversity. Really fun. That's Favor of the Pharaoh. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.
You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut up the door! Yeah. Yeah.